looking around for salvation. I've been looking around for the truth. All around me I see frustration. And I looked all over till I found you. You're telling me, please don't worry So lot in this world you should know And love in life is where you should go If you're looking for somewhere to go If you're looking for someone to know If you're looking for someone to guide you Then love in life will guide you I know the life of science so hard There's a lot of things that can tear you apart I know the roads sometimes feel lonely But remember you're not the one and only There's always someone there to help Join the love and life crew If you're Looking for Somewhere to go If you're Good evening, fellow South Africans and citizens of the world. Well, tonight we've got a very, very important subject to discuss. Tonight we look at the sharp end of a dysfunctional government. South Africa today is a failed state, thanks to a bunch of stupid, ego-driven, corrupt and self-serving ANC members of parliament. Yes, I call a spade a spade. President Ramaphosa has still not stepped down despite a report finding that he has brought the government's top position into disrepute. The minister I call the Schladi Mutzeneng of the ANC, that moron Becky Sele, epitomizes what I'm talking about. Let's look at a few short video clips featuring this idiot, the police minister. Here we go. Good morning, officers! Good morning! Ay, ay. Ay, 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 ay. Who's that? Who's that? Stop that! Tomorrow, starting from yesterday, today, tomorrow, and after. I'm tired of the excuses, and I'm tired of you making this a political thing. None of these people tonight, when they see their neighbors being slaughtered on the streets, worry about your nonsense comments 
about the Constitution and about devolution. They worry about surviving, sir. And I would like to end off with this. I want to graciously invite you to come and patrol without a bodyguard, without a grand car, in normal clothes, with this community tonight. To get the sewage on your shoes that they patrol through. You have a problem, Mr. Minister, because you are removed from reality that the rest of us face. But the minister hit back. And I'm not going to take any nonsense of somebody who regards me as a garden boy today because you regard me as a garden boy. You come here, shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I sat here, I sat here, I listened to you. I sat here, I listened to you talking nonsense. Listen, it's your time to listen. Sit down and listen, young man. All right, I think you get the idea. What an idiot. Anyway, a few weeks ago, a young woman, Patricia Mashuli, who played an important role in the South African police service, blew the whistle on nepotism and irregular appointments taking place in the South African police service. Since then, nothing has happened about these serious allegations, but there has been more than one attempt on her life by hitmen who appear to be working with or for the South African Police Service, believe it or not. I'll get my very brave guest, Patricia Mashula, on. Here we go. Patricia. Hi, Scott. How are you? I'm good, and you? Excellent. Oh, you got your camera to work. Yeah, no, I'm on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's even better. That's perfect. Yes. Yes. All right. Now, b before we get into tonight's topic, um, I, I think just by way of background, would you like us to tell, to, or tell everybody watching a bit about your background growing up in South Africa and what led you to join the South African Police Service? Yes, yes, they have not Over to you. Uh, yes. Um, I was born in August 1974 in a township in, in Bloemfontein called Aida So So um, when I was born, my father died when I was uh, about uh, seven months old. He was um, set alight by his employer. Oh no! In, uh, yeah, he was. He was. His employer put petrol on him, and he set him alight. So uh, I was. Yeah, like I say, I, I, we were three children. I was about seven months old. My sister was two, and my older brother was five years old. So we were left with my mom. She was like uh, twenty-one each at a time. And she was unemployed because my father was a breadwinner. So yes, from there on, she she was now unemployed with the three uh, young children, and she had to go and look for a job herself. Um, and um, I I don't remember much about those years when I was still growing up. All I remember is from the time when I was about five years going to school and so. And all I can remember is my mom had been the single, single mother for all those years. And uh, life was actually very hard, Scott. We didn't have any luxuries and so on. And uh, all I ever wanted to do is to see myself completing my matric and go and, 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 and uh, have a job and so on. And um, by the, uh, when I was in a, a great uh, 10, standard 8, I had to drop out of school because by that time um, I had a problem with my with my eyesight. So uh, my mother couldn't afford to buy me glasses. So what happened then, uh, uh, 
um, I was always from 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 primary school. I was a very bright student, a student, and I did very well at school. So from uh, uh, grade ten, uh, my uh, my mark started to deteriorate because of the fact that I, I my eyesight I couldn't see, and my mom couldn't afford to buy me glasses. So I dropped out of school, promising myself that as soon as I have got a job and have enough money to buy myself glasses, I will go back to school and complete my schooling. So yes, I indeed found found a job at the local hospital, and I worked there for about it was it was from 1990. Um, I worked there until 1995. But unfortunately, in 90, 1991, I fell pregnant, and I had a little girl, so I couldn't go back to school immediately. But uh, my mom, mom was very supportive, and she helped me actually to raise uh, my daughter. And then in 1995, I, 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 after uh, talking to my mom, I decided that it was the time for me to go back to school to go and complete my trip. And then uh, I, I resigned at work, and then I went to look for school. Uh, so I started again my grade, my grade 10 in 1995, January. And then, uh, unfortunately, the same year, um, October of, of 1995, my mom died in a hit and run accident. So I was back to square one. I didn't have someone to, 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 to uh, sustain me financially. And by that time, I also had my three little uh, brothers, uh, uh, half brothers. And uh, my mom was the breadwinner in the house. And so I, I had to make another tough choice again. Do I drop out of school again uh, or, or to go and look for work? or uh, what do I do? Wait, which way do I go? So I decided to go back to where I, I, I worked before at a hospital, and I asked them for a part-time job. Fortunately, they offered me a part-time night shift job. It was from 6 uh, in the evening until 6 in the morning. So what happened then is um, I would go to work at 6 uh, in the evening, and then come in the mornings, uh, prepare my, my siblings and myself, and then we will go to school, all of us together in the morning. And then after school, I will do my homework. I will try to, 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 to study a bit. And then I, I prepare again to go to work, and then, they, then I will leave them with, with a neighbor. And uh, it went on like, like, like three years, but I, I must really say that the school that where I enrolled, at the teachers at the school, the principal, my former learners were so supportive, especially during my mother's passing. And uh, they supported me through those three years. And then uh, in 1997, I, I completed my matric. I put flying colors, uh, exemption. And then I applied to the Three State Nursing College to become a student nurse, and I was accepted in 1998. Uh, but I realized soon thereafter, like six months thereafter, that was not my passion. And then um, I decided to, 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 to resign again because I hated to work in a hospital. I, I, I didn't like to see sick people. Um, and then uh, I, I resigned. And by the time in 1998, I also got married, and then I had my my my, my second daughter. Uh, it, she was born on the first of January, uh, 20, uh, 2001. And then I decided, uh, just decided, okay, fine, let me just raise my children. Now my 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 son was born, uh, 28 of of September, 2002. So I had no now these two child, uh, small babies, and I decided to raise them. And then um, when they were about uh, school going age, I decided to, to apply for a job in the South African Police Service. And then uh, on 1st August 2007, I was then appointed in uh, the provincial office 
uh, the firearms department uh, in the South African police. Right. Now, um, I've got a special request for you, um, Patricia. If you can just talk a little bit louder. Um, people are finding you a little bit quiet, but that, that's, that's okay. If you can just talk a bit louder. Now, let's get on to um, your time in the South African Police Service. You, you were there for uh, close to 15 years, and you obviously moved up the ladder during that time. And you started seeing things that weren't right, didn't you? Yes, uh, Scott, I was there um, in August uh, of uh, uh, this year. I was, uh, it was going to be my 15th year in the South African Police Service. Uh, I wouldn't say I climbed the ladder. I was in the same rank for, for all those years. Because in the South African Police Service, I've noticed that if you... Um, if you outspoken about uh, uh, wrong things, you will never progress. You, you, you will not progress. They will make sure you don't progress. So um, I, I didn't progress. Um, I was staying in the same rank for all those years. And yes, I started, I saw in, in uh, 2009, actually it was about two years uh, into uh, uh, um, uh, uh, my employment in the South African Police Service. I started to see that things are being done differently. Uh, I started to see a lot of wrongdoing. I started to see corruption, and I decided to, 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 to report it. So I started to blow the whistle on, on, on corruption in the South African Police Service, actually, uh, from 2009. And it was two years I started to work in the South African Police Service. Right. Now, um, if once again, if you can just talk loud, um, almost shout, just so, because people are saying that they find it hard to hear what you're saying. Um, okay, so let's let's just focus on blowing the whistle. When you actually go to someone and say, "Hey, I saw this happening. It's 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 wrong. They shouldn't be doing that." What sort of response do you get from the senior officer who you reported to? What 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 do they say? You know what, most of the time, uh, most of the time when you report to the senior officers, they don't want to get involved. They don't want to get implicated. You are being labeled. You are being, la I remember this other senior officers when I reported um, wrongdoing to me, he told me to mind my own business. Uh, and I told him, I say, it's very difficult for me to mind my own business when i see uh, people doing uh, especially in the government uh, and in my workplace because this is also my workplace so it's difficult for me to mind my own business i will only mind my own business when someone is doing something wrong at his own house but uh, at my workplace i'm not going to allow someone to do something wrong in front of me i will report so <clears throat> just just to summarize what you said so far, you never progressed at all in the South African Police Service because they probably saw you as a threat. Am I correct in suggesting that? You are absolutely correct. They did see me as a threat, and uh, I, I, I think that uh, they, they t told themselves that if I would progress, then I'm going to be a bigger problem to them. Right. All right. Well, let, let, let's let's look at the retaliation uh, of those that you blew the whistle on. And there, there were several people, and I think a lot of that had to do with people who were wrongly appointed in senior positions in the South African Police Service. Do you want to take us through um, some examples of that and the retaliation? Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, 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 I reported, the, the people that I reported is actually senior officials. They are in top management positions. And uh, they're, they're wrongly appointed. You know what posts are being advertised in the South African Police Service? There are requirements for the post. Uh, like the person who are being appointed in that post must have the, the, the qualifications, the skills, and most of all, the competency to perform that, 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 that uh, functions. And in the South African Police Service, you are not being appointed based on your competencies. You are not being appointed based on your skills, your experience. 
you are being appointed based on who you know, on, on who you are and who you know. Right. And and what what's the most senior position you know of that someone's got right now in the South African Police Service where they've just got that position because they know the right person? The most senior position that I can talk about you know, someone right now, recently, have been appointed from a brigadier to a mayor general. And that person doesn't have the competency. That person doesn't have the experience. That person doesn't have the skill. And that one is a fact I know about. It. And it, it, it's a, she was appointed about two months ago in that position. And that is because of who she knows, not what she knows. And, and are you able to name that person? Yes, I can name her. What is I'm her able name? To name her. her name, it, she was, I was working actually under her. She, she was the provincial head of visible policing. Uh, she was a brigadier Muchuluhi. She's now a mayor general Muchuluhi. She's been appointed in, in, in Western Cape as the district command commissioner. And I can say, I saw that lady's performance assessment. That lady is not a career police officer. She was never a, po a career police officer in her life. She was appointed in 2011 as a brigadier into the South African Police Service. And she was appointed as a communication officer. They were, they are, they, wow. They, I, I, I mean on that panel, even the, when she was appointed as the, as the head of a civil policing, they were much more skilled, experienced, competent, trained uh, career police officials who uh, I believe topped the list uh, in that panel. But uh, because of who she knows, she was appointed in that position. Right. And, and did she know someone um, in, in, in the government or did she know someone actually no. higher up? She knows someone in the police, higher up in the police. Right. OK. So um, what you're saying is at the top levels of the South African police service, very senior members of the police service are appointing people who haven't got a clue what they're doing into very senior roles because of their relationship, friendship, maybe nepotism or a family member. This is what's taking place right at the top of the South African Police Service. Am I correct in saying that? You are absolutely correct. Right. And, and can you give us some other examples of senior people who've been appointed that way? Uh, I can give you a few other examples. Uh, when the, 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 the former acting national commissioner, uh, Patani, the one who was recently arrested, uh, he, just in, he just appointed people, he just promoted people on posts they were never advertised, regardless of the fact that the person actually have the experience or the skills in that post. In, uh, those posts were never advertised. He just went from province to province. And he just uh, 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 promoted people just like like he was uh, he was uh, dishing out sweets. And uh, yes, I, there's a few few. They, they, that is one of the people that I'm talking about. And I'm going to give you another example. It is it is central. It is, it is a firearm registry in Free State. Uh, there's recently also someone. You, this, this person was a station commander all his all the years. And uh, because of his relation with the provincial commissioner, he was taken to the firearms department where I was working. And uh, we knew already, uh, even before he was taken there, that he, they were going to take him there in prom because the, the post was upgraded to a brigadier post. And we knew that he was going to be appointed. He doesn't have the experience, he doesn't have the skills, he doesn't have the competence, he's never worked in that environment before, but regardless of all that, he has been promoted. There were, there were people who have been uh, working in that environment for m more than 10 years, who were part also of that uh, panel, who were over, they, uh, they, they didn't even consider them and this person, because of his relation with a, with a, with a provincial commissioner, uh, was appointed in this, that position. Well, what was that person's name, the one who is appointed? He's, he's, he is uh, now Brigadier Ntlati. 
and and that's in the free state. He was in Bloemfontein, in Bloemfontein, the free state. Wow. He is now the the, the provincial head of the firearm uh, registry in free state. And and what you're saying is he's got absolutely no experience in that, and there are people who've been yep. working there for ten years and they've been overlooked. Absolutely no experience. He's never worked in that environment before in his life. In 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 the firearm environment, uh, firearm environment is not only about the firearms. Uh, the, 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 it's broad. Is the firearms? You get the firearms. You get the the second hand goods, and you get the liquor monitoring. So you must have broad experience across those three uh, priorities. And he absolutely had no experience. He had never worked in that environment before. He doesn't know anything about that environment. Wow. Okay, so what 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 you confirm is that the South African Police Service is basically employing into very senior positions people who are clueless. That is what I'm saying. So is it any surprise then that the South African Police Service is corrupt and a mess? Absolutely not. It's not a surprise uh, because, like I say, uh, one Mayor General Machele told at the Commission, uh, uh, the, the, inspe the former inspector, uh, inspector General of Intelligence testified in the, the Zondo Commission it does Mayor General Machele, after he asked her, why are they only employing their girlfriends, their children, their boyfriends, their friends, she told him because there is a relationship of trust. They trust the, these people because they are related to them and uh, they will obviously uh, 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 not speak out about the corruption they had been committed by because they are family members and they are trusted members. Right. Now... I remember reading a couple of weeks ago where you actually talked about, uh, I think there was a woman who was actually was a, a citizen from another country who was appointed in a senior role in the South African Police Service. Do you want to give us a bit of background to that? Yes, uh, this woman also, uh, is, uh, she is the, the, the Divisional Commissioner of Human uh, uh, Resource Management. Uh, uh, in the count South African Police Service. She is Lieutenant General uh, uh, Dineo Ntia. I made the allegations because I have the, I had a proof that this woman is, was not born in South Africa. And then um, uh, there was an IPAD investigation, or could I say there was an IPAD cover-up because it was not an investigation. To, to, to first, uh, the first report, when, uh, when they submitted the first report, they said this, this, woman, but this woman alleges that she was born in Belkom. Then come IPAD's first uh, preliminary report to say this woman was actually born in Matatiela. And then when I went public in, on, on, on TV to, to, to contest uh, uh, that report, then they come with another report and now alleged in this report that this woman was born in Belcom now. But I, and they said there was a thorough investigation. They spent 150,000 rand to go to family and friends and ex-husbands to get statements to who was present at her birth and, 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 and that's not what I wanted. What I wanted was simple, Scott. If you are born in a certain country, there must be a birth certificate, uh, an abridged birth certificate with the particulars of your parents. And uh, you must have a humanization card because babies are taken to, 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 to clinics to get the uh, vaccines and stuff. So in, I still have my birth certificate. I still have my humanization card. I still, they still, if you can go to the hospital where I was born, they will still give you the records that I was, Patricia was born on this day at half past 11 in the, in the morning. There's the kind of records that I wanted. And there's the kind of records that they can give to me. If you, if you, the school where you went to when you were enrolled, when you started school, there must be records of that school. 
Now they started this lady school, school career at, 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 at uh, standard six and grade eight. This lady was not a tree, she was not planted. She was born like a human being. So she must have, she must have a birth certificate. There must be a place of birth, a hospital where she was born. She must have a humanization card. She must have been enrolled in a primary school. And then uh, in their report, there's even a, a, a contradictions in the report where they say that two schools where this lady alleges to went to, that both two schools uh, uh, refused that claim to say she was never a learner at that school. But then somewhere down in the report, they say now they got a matric certificate from one of the schools. So that report is so full of gaps and holes and contradictions. I want IPAD is compromised because IPAD is reporting to the to the to the minister himself. I will only believe that lady was born in South Africa when there is an independent investigation by maybe a retired judge or, 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 or independent uh, in, uh, people. And if they can provide me with all those simple things that everyone in South Africa is supposed to have and not statements of neighbors and, 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 and ex-husbands and whoever else. That does not prove that that lady was born in... I, I want the simple things. Just the birth certificate, humanization card. Where did she go to school? And in, uh, in which hospital was she born? That's all. Right. Now, just, just to be clear, IPID is the Independent Police Investigative Directorate. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay. Now... I know of a case where um, a, f a fellow in uh, um, near, near Port St. John's was uh, attacked by members of the police. And um, a report was sent to IPID about this, and a year later, nothing had been done about it. What, what you, did you have much experience with IPID? What did you think of the way they operated? Uh, you know what? Um... I put, like, like I said, I put is compromised. The last time I trusted I put, well, it was when Robert McBride was the head of I put. Since Robert McBride was removed from I put, I put have become uh, 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 very compromised. You cannot have a situation like, uh, like, like what I experienced where I put have to report to the, to the minister but then the head of IPED uh, uh, discussed the appointment of the national commissioner with the minister. Because before Fanny Masimola was appointed as the national, as the national commissioner, the executive head of IPED already elected us that Fanny Masimola was going to be appointed. So how, is, how, 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 how does it work? Because IPED is supposed to be independent from the police. IPAD is supposed to be independent. That yes, they, they they report to the minister, but how come they discuss the appointment of a, the, the national commissioner with the minister? So uh, 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 IPAD is compromised. That's why I don't trust IPAD's investigations because everything they do, they are doing with, in conjunction with the minister. The minister tell them what to do. The minister tell them what the outcome of an investigation should, should be. So. Uh, uh, um, Unless I could get their own independency with the real, people who are reliable, who are not compromised, then I will also start uh, believing in IPAD again. But since Robert McBride was removed from IPAD, IPAD is not what he's supposed to be. Okay, a couple of questions related to that. Uh, firstly, why was Robert McBride removed from IPAD? Uh, in my opinion, Robert McBride was removed from IPAD because he didn't dance to the tune of the minister. Okay, so so you you what you're saying is that Mr. Sele, um, who calls himself a garden boy, by the way, um, is is basically interfering with IPAD and the way it works. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And, and yeah, you say you say his father was a garden boy and his mother was a, a kitchen girl. But I think he was. Uh, uh, there's a song. There's a there's a gospel song from Rebecca Malupe, 
uh, you are just singing that day to 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 Ian Cameron. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay, let's get back to those people that you blew the whistle on. Um, what is have they retaliated in any way against you personally? You, Scott, they retaliated. They come af They came after me with the resources of the South African Police Services. You know what? With everything that they have, remember, I don't have resources. I, I don't have the kind of resources that they have. Even if I was still in the in the they are in top positions, they can do whatever with the resources. So they use the resources of the South African Police Service to harass me, to retaliate against me. They, 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 they open uh, criminal cases against me. Currently now I'm facing a few criminal cases of harassment against the police. I'm being prosecuted for harassing the police. Wow. Okay, and, and um, who are the people who brought these charges against you? The person who brought the charges against me is one of the people that I that I implicated in the in the corruption that I reported to the former national commissioner, and he is the the the, the provincial uh, commissioner of of policing in Free State, uh, deputy provincial commissioner of policing in Free State, and he is uh, you will probably after I name take it again uh, tomorrow uh, there is another charge going to be open of harassment against me. Uh, he is Mayor General Lucia. Wow. Okay. And um, has anything been done by the police against the people that you believe um, are, are are corrupt, or they're you know they're they're employing people who are their friends? Has in, anything happened? In any any of those allegations been looked at at all by the police? Absolutely not. All they do, all the national commissioner do as court is to defend, to cover up, and to protect. That's all he's doing. The national commissioner uh, 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 um, said there was an investigation by, by, by IPAD. IPAD did investigate, but still there's no action. And after IPAD investigated, the national commissioner appointed a counter-investigation team from counter-intelligence. Remember, IPAD already investigated. After IPAD's investigation, a counter-intelligence team was investigated to, 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 to look, actually to monitor me, to censor me, to, to, to see where, who is the sources of my information. That's what they were looking for. And then afterwards, the national commissioner sent the provincial commissioner of, 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 I think it was Mpumalanga, to me to come and say she must now investigate again. And I declined. I say, but how if IPAD is still busy? By that time, IPAD was still busy investigating. I said he already appointed a counter investigation team, and now he's appointing an, a two pro, uh, provincial commissioner to come and investigate while IPET is already investigated. So that shows that this national commissioner doesn't even know the, 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 the regulations, he doesn't know the, the, the processes. Because the police cannot come and investigate where IPET already investigated or where there is already an active investigation by IPET. IPET cannot uh, 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 give their investigation back to the police. That cannot happen. The police cannot investigate the police. And uh, that's why I declined. When he sent these two provincial commissioners to me, I said, what are they coming to investigate? Because IPAD is already busy investigating. And he also claimed now his counterintelligence investigation team, I'm still waiting for that report to come out. I know the investigation is finalized. I also know the person who investigated was instructed to, 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 to amend a report. And I also know that she's facing uh, departmental charges because she didn't want to amend the report. I know all that. And uh, there is the, the situation whenever they have to, 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 to investigate all, all those allegations that I made against the police. Remember, Scott, I'm talking about people's names here. 
they, they say is defamatory. I'm talking about people's reputations here. And all they do is, is get, uh, obtaining protection orders against me. All they do is opening a, a criminal harassment cases against me. Why don't they just do a civil litigation? Why they don't just don't just sue me so that I can go and prove my allegations in court? That's what I want. Now they they they, they are charging me criminally. They are they are they are obtaining protection orders. As long as they do that, Scott, I'm not going to stop. Protection orders or not protection orders, criminal charges or not, unless they sue me so that I can go and, 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 and prove my allegations in court, I'm not going to stop. Yeah. Now, look, <clears throat> from what I've heard, um, there are now a couple of groups of, well, we call them hitmen, who are out to try and take you out, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, I, about three weeks ago, a squad, uh, I was I was followed by a, a black Ford Ranger. Uh, I was not, let me not say followed, they chased us. They chased us and you could see that um, they wanted to get next to our car. And if it wasn't for my son-in-law who, who remained so calm and, and handled the situation and managed to evade them, I would, both of us would have been shot. And because I, I afterwards I heard that same black Ford Ranger without the number plate was involved uh, in the heat against the 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 the, 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 the member of the I think it's the Department of Home Affairs who blew the whistle on the corruption of Home Affairs. So yes, uh, uh, I've been I'm I'm being followed on a daily basis wherever I go. I'm still being followed. I'm being monitored. And in in the 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 the, 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 the moment they get a chance. They're going to take me out. Wow. Now, um, you've obviously reported this, uh, what, what's happening to the police. Have, have they done anything at all about this, given you any protection at all? Score, this was reported to the Portfolio Committee of, of Police. Um, I was in the, in the Portfolio Committee uh, meeting <laughs> um, to present. Okay, let me start it from the beginning. We, uh, it was reported by, by, on behalf of, of me by Mrs. Mary Daas to the Portfolio Committee of Police. Remember, I was in hiding. I didn't have any internet facilities. I couldn't write letters to them. So Mary Daas did everything on my behalf. The Portfolio Committee uh, in, uh, uh, issued an instruction to the Provincial uh, uh, Commissioner to do the threat assessment. Let me be clear. On the letter of the portfolio committee, they said a threat assessment must be done. So there's a there's a difference between a threat assessment and a risk assessment. So uh, warrant officer Masdor from counterintelligence here in Bloomfield State was appointed to do the threat assessment. Uh, he called me on that day. It was in March. I remember he called me. And I was very, very reluctant. I, I, I told him that I don't trust anyone. I'm not going to talk to him unless he shows me proof that he was actually uh, uh, appointed. And then he sent me uh, the, the, the letter, uh, the instruction of the portfolio committee. He sent me his appointment letter. So we did everything virtually. I sent all, all the information that I have, I sent it to him virtually because there was already a rest to meet with him. And he also indicated that it was not a good idea that we meet uh, because I was already in hiding. So then after he got all the information, he called the relevant people. He called, he called the executive head of IPAD. He called all the relevant people that I named in my, in my, in my, in, uh, the information that I gave to him. And then he then um, uh, compiled this threat assessment and he submitted it to his commanders. And they rejected it. The reason why they rejected it is because it did implicate the, 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 the provincial management of, 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 of SAPS and Free State. And his commander actually instructed him to change the contents of the of the of the threat is, uh, assessment and now she said no uh, they are not going to uh, accept the threat assessment he must now do a risk assessment now a risk assessment is something entirely different from a threat assessment 
a risk assessment now you must physically now go and meet with this person whose life are uh, 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 in danger you must meet with a family you must know where where the children go to school you must actually get every information that you ha can get from these people and he indicated to them to say that's not possible to do a risk assessment because this person is already in hiding we are going to expose her to the people who want to harm her and the commander told him that she's going to charge him departmentally because he didn't want to comply he didn't want to give her the information that she wanted because she wanted now to 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 get my information from him he refused and for that he was he was uh, actually charged departmentally and then this this uh, uh, they send they re uh, respond to the, the to the chairperson of the portfolio committee to say that um they did they rejected the threat assessment based on the fact that the format of the threat assessment was not correct and then the, the chairperson of the portfolio committee agreed with them to say no uh, uh, they are not going to give me uh, protection because the format is not correct. Without calling, uh, they never even uh, 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 made, made any means to call Warrant Officer Mazur to ask him, uh, the portfolio committee, to ask him, listen, why did you come to this conclusion? Why did you do it? They never, they just took the word of SAPS like, like they do every time SAPS come with something to them. They just take the word of SAPS as gospel. Right. So yes, uh, the, the the threat assessment was rejected. I never received any protection from from SAPS. Uh, the, the the portfolio committee uh, uh, in March already failed me by 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 going with the with the with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with SAPS on on, on 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 that issue of the threat assessment. Well, look, I, I just want to say to you that by speaking out like this, and especially because we have a big international audience, um, it's going to make it very difficult for them to target you because the best thing you can do right now is make a noise because if something does happen to you, then everybody knows what's going on. And, of course, they can't afford for that to happen. And uh, if Mr. Seller is listening to this live stream, uh, and he was invited, by the way, to, to come in and join us tonight, but he refused. Um, all I can say to Mr. Seller is that your uh, department, the South African Police Service, is a rat's nest. And it's been led by an absolute snake, which is Mr. Seller. Um, I, I find it absolutely shocking. You know, when pre-1994, um, the South African Police Service had a reputation and it was a good one today the South African police service are a joke you just have to look at the amount of security companies there are who are now doing the work of what should be policing um, what what are your thoughts about what has happened to the South African police service under Mr. Seller under uh, 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 Becky Taylor yes remember I also implicated Becky Taylor in, in corruption because, because Becky Taylor is complicit to this corruption that is happening in ACPS. Under Becky Taylor, you know what, uh, 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 Scott, if I could get the opportunity to write to the uh, International Criminal, Criminal Court, I would like Becky Taylor to be charged for, 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 for genocide and for, for crimes against humanity. Because under Becky Taylor, crime have reached the highest level ever. Yeah. People are being murdered on a daily basis. Women are being raped. Even 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 uh, a tour, tourists, people who are uh, coming from uh, to to uh, uh, have their holidays in South Africa, are being robbed and murdered. And Abeki Kele, I call him a minister of, of, of condolences. All he do is go to the to the slain uh, 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 victims of crime and uh, be on camera and give his condolences. Becky Kele doesn't have an idea 
of, of, of the South African police service. And, 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 and rightfully so, because he's not this, uh, a police officer, but he's not giving the, the national commissioner a chance to be a police officer. The national commissioner is a, is a career police officer, but Becky Taylor is running the police. Becky Taylor doesn't know where his functions as a minister starts. He doesn't know where his functions as a minister ends. Becky Taylor is the, is the minister, he's the national commissioner, he's the spokesperson, he's become a jack of all trades and a master of nine. So under Becky Taylor, South Africa has suffered enormously. And as I said, and I'm in the process of writing to the International Criminal Court so that Becky Taylor could be charged. He, 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 he refused to accept that he's a failure. He refused to accept that his hands are dripping with the blood of South Africans. So uh, uh, I'm not going to leave it like he has got. And seeing that I'm, I'm on international uh, TV and I'm being watched internationally, I would urge people, I, I want people to assist me to bring these charges against Becky Taylor in an international criminal court. Right. Now, just talking about the process, you've also been dealing with the DPP in South Africa. Now, how have you found their performance? Oh, Scott, you know what? When I was at court uh, recently, DPP is in cahoots with the South African Police Service. That one I'm going to add. And, and I'm talking now about uh, a family. I'm talking about a chief uh, 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 public pro uh, protector, uh, prosecutor, is the husband. The, uh, the senior prosecutor is the wife. And they are in cahoots with the management of the South African Police Service. You know what, uh, Scott, you open a docket at a, at a police, like my docket. Let me say how my docket was handled. I opened a docket against Mayor General Isia at a Park Road police station. Mayor General Isia is the suspect. Now, Mayor General Isia went to the Park Road sta police station. He took that docket. He appointed a detective. And he went with the docket to the DPP. And, 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 and uh, 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 the DPP... It, their docket, I opened their docket in, I think it's, 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 it's almost now nine months that I, I opened their docket against, at least it was in September, it was in September, that I opened their docket against Mayor General Isia and the DPP is just, the docket is just sitting on the, off, on the, uh, on the, on the desk of the DPP, no determination. Now goes Mayor General Isia open a harassment case against me for spreading false allegations against him and DPP prosecute. I'm now in court being prosecuted. Uh, again, he comes again after the broadcasting of a, of a TV program where I also expose the corruption and DPP prosecute the harassment case of spreading false allegations. Second case, the last time when I was at court, I was charged again. Licia is the complainant. He sent the, the detective, by the way, the, the, the head of the, 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 the detective unit now is the same person that Licia instructed to take my, 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 my personal phone with a fraudulent uh, a search and seizure warrant. He is now the, 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 uh, appointed by Licia. So now Lisa Licia is now the complainant, the open harassment case against me. Uh, the previous day, when I went to court the next day, the docket was already at court. It was not even on the court roll yet. The docket was already at court. They already spoke with the DPP. And uh, I was charged again for harassment, for spreading false allegations against uh, Alicia. And on that day, I just decided that, you know what, Scott, they can bring all the cases that they want against me. I, 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 I can defend myself. I have proof of everything that I'm saying. But I want a fair trial. I don't say don't open cases against me, don't drag me to court, but give me at least a fair trial. And I asked the magistrate that day to address the court. The magistrate gave me an opportunity to address the court. I told the magistrate, I said, there's another, there's another case is brought against me, uh, whereby the DPP is prosecuting me again. So yes, let the cases proceed, I don't have a problem, but give me a fair trial. All I'm requesting the court now I have a problem with a DPP. Can the DPP be replaced and independent DPP be brought from another province? 
And you know what? The judge granted my request, the, the, the magistrate. The magistrate even say, you know what? I will even, own, even remove myself. Let us do it like this. I'm going to remove the entire Free State Prosecution team and the magistrate. I'm going to, to, to request that another prosecution team from another province and a magistrate must be appointed. And I'm happy with that because now I will be able to get a fair trial. I will be able to pre present my, 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 my evidence that I have in court. And, and, and yes, these false allegations will be tested in court. Yeah. Now, now just getting back to what you were saying earlier with the, the rising crime level, for people who are from outside South Africa, I think all South Africans know this to be fact, but right now there is someone in South Africa statistically being murdered and several women right now being raped. That's how bad it is in South Africa right now. And this is all happening under the watch of Police Minister Bekesele, the guy who wears, wears a gangster hat and the guy who I played at the very start of this live stream. Now, we've, we've talked about the role of IPID, we've talked about the role of the DPP. Just with the DPP, you talked about a husband and wife team who are in very senior positions. Is that Major General Lesia, who's who's the husband? No, no, no. The husband is 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 the husband and the wife team. A DPP is yeah. Mister and Mrs. Masuku. Okay. That is the husband. The 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 yes. And in in there's a lot of people. Believe me, when I was at court the last time, a few prosecutors told me they say, you know what, we are at, we are so thrilled of what you did of what happened because the stories we can tell about these two people. But we actually, we are now in the process. We already wrote a letter to Shamila Batoy so that Mr. and Mrs. Matluku can be investigated. Right. Okay. So Major General Lucia, is he, is he also DPP or is he one of the provincial... No, no, no. Major General Lucia is the Deputy Provincial Commissioner. Right. In the Free State. Yeah. Please. Okay. Got it. Right. Okay. Now, I guess... The, the National Commissioner also is, is someone we should be talking about. Do you want to talk about the role of, of the National Commissioner in your case? What I can tell you about the National Commissioner, the National Commissioner also has his own skeletons in his closet. He's not clean. And I know his skeletons. Before the National, when, uh, when General Sitole was, he was not, General Sitole was not even removed yet. When we already knew by, by word, word of the of the executive director of IPAD, Becky Tele wanted to appoint a former um, uh, mayor general who was dismissed from the police. It was Mayor General, general Mguinya. Becky Tele wanted to appoint her, actually. And they didn't, uh, he, he couldn't uh, uh, do that. So he's next choice the reason why he opted for masimula is because he said and that was the words of of of, of the executive director of Apple. he said that masimula doesn't have guts that's why he appointed him but uh, in other words masimula is just sitting there drawing a salary sitting on that chair not having guts while becky Taylor is running the the, the, the show right so you, you know the whole the whole police service and the associated government departments are, are, are basically just corrupt. Yes. It is what I'm saying. The police, let me tell you, the police needs a complete overall squad. Currently in the police, I don't see anyone having any in the, and I'm talking about senior managers that knows what to do, that knows the Anti-Corruption Act, I'm talking about them. I don't see anyone with integrity in the police currently because they knew, they knew what is happening. They knew about the corruption. They saw the corruption, but they chose to keep quiet. And, 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 and all of them, all of them took an out of office. All of them on a daily basis. If you can go and look in, on, on their personal files now, there's a code of conduct of the police. 
all of them signed that count of or code of conduct but, but all of them never ever they didn't honor that code of conduct that they signed so what i'm saying is no one in the police currently has any morals any integrity right what about the portfolio committee of police you know what um there are people there are few people of, of whom i i'm speaking at the portfolio committee of police of the of the opposition party right who actually assisted me a lot but uh, the chairperson of the portfolio com uh, uh, committee of police i have a problem with them and she know it i compl i actually uh, 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 submitted a formal complaint against her because she's been she's been ignoring me in Mary the Hassan's march you know when when she only was also at the, we we've been writing numerous letters since march she all only acted after I, I i went public with all the information and then she invited me and mary the has to come and address the portfolio committee we never requested we never requested to address the portfolio committee she invited as we still have the invites from her and then when we eventually had to present she told us that we should have submitted a petition so tell me scott how do you invite someone to come and present and then when that person is eventually there you tell that person that okay fine i will give you a chance to present but you will not get the opportunity to ask questions you will ne not get the opportunity to respond uh and, and 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 you should have submitted a petition which anyway was submitted and first they denied they never got that petition and then uh, uh then they they, they 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 say no they did get a petition it was not in the correct format in 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 in, in. at first they they t they said they never received the petition and then now they come and say you must present and the police will make a presentation only the police will get the opportunity to 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 to, to ask questions or to respond on questions so 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 what did she want us to do in that uh, uh, uh committee what was the use for us to be there just to go and listen to the lies of the police and not be given an opportunity to, to respond to the police. Right. Now, you, you mentioned um, an opposition uh, member of that portfolio committee. Uh, was that the uh, Democratic Alliance or was it the Freedom Front yes, Plus? Yes, I have, I, have, I have two, I have, I have, I have two oppos uh, from the EFF uh, and then the Democratic Alliance and then the IEC. So those are the persons whom I have uh, communicated on a regular basis who are always outnumbered when it comes to decision making because you know most the, 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 the governing party is the majority voice in, in these portfolio committees. So yes, uh, uh, they actually wanted to do the right thing. They assisted me, really, they did. And uh, they, were, they were outnumbered again. Wow. And um, what do they say about your safety? Because obviously, if you've got people running around in cars after you, wanting to take you out, I mean, that's not a not a very sound position, is it? You know what? I, I, I actually thought that we are going to address the issue of my safety because it was a priority. It was not addressed at all. It was not addressed at all. They told us that they will give us another day. I know the parliament is going in recess until February. Man. So they are going on holiday with their families. They are going to enjoy with their families. And they told me that I must wait for another date. So I must, uh, if I'm still alive by February next year, it's not a problem. Yeah. Uh, and just again for the international audience, what, what you're hearing about here is what's called cadre deployment. In other words, what happens is you've got a police minister who comes into the position head of police. I'm talking about uh, Becca Sele, and he starts employing all his mates, and um, they employ their mates all in very, very senior positions. They don't have any experience. They don't know what they're doing, and they're totally incompetent. So when you spread that model across every department in government department in South Africa, including state-owned enterprises, you can see why the country 
is in such a mess. And of course, that applies in municipalities as well. Um, is there anything you'd like to met, uh, talk about when it comes to cadre deployment, uh, Patricia? Your uh, squad cadre de deployment was the beginning of the end of, of our beautiful country. We are in this situation. The country is in this situation because of cadre uh, uh, employment. You know what in South Africa, uh, when you 35 years and older, you don't find a job anymore. I mean, at 35 years, you are at the peak of your life. It's only when you, when you start to get the responsibilities, you get married, you have children, and so you don't get a job because the requirements, especially in the in the in the government, uh, the age requirements is for from 18 to 35 years old. So after 35 years, you have 25 years of your life. You've been rendered useless by the government. And then the government will tell you, you must apply for a 350 rand grant. I don't know until when is that grant, grant going to last. And I mean uh, 350 rand a month. You know what? Uh, let me say the government has turned our people into slaves. That's what they did. Because I don't understand uh, why do we have over 35s in parliament? Because they are also public servants. The parliamentarians are public servants. So if the public act, if there's a clause in the public act to say that you must only work until a certain age or you will only get a job until a certain age, then it must apply across the board. If, if, if the, the, the regular citizens cannot get a job after 35 years old, let it also apply then to the, to the, to the politicians. Let it also apply to the par parliamentarians. But they don't care about, about their voters. They don't care about the taxpayers. Because these people are the people who actually pay for their salaries. No one has to back anyone for anything in South Africa. Because this is the taxpayers' money. The ministers, the president, the politicians, they must serve the people because the people are paying them to serve. No one must beg in anyone for anything in South Africa. But the, 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 the roles have been reversed to such a point that, that this democracy only applies to the politicians and the, the family, the friends, and the, and the elite. Uh, generally, the, 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 the general population of South Africa doesn't know. They don't know what democracy is looking like. Yeah. Now, just talking about the politicians, have you had any contact at all with um, the outgoing president, uh, Ramaphosa? And I'm saying outgoing because I think he's got a huge amount of problems on, on his shoulders right now. Um, but have you had any contact with him regarding this? Or his I wrote, yes, I wrote to, to, to his office, straight to his office on several occasions. I got a response from his PA, uh, and he, he kept on referring me back to Becky Tele until I responded to him that uh, he, must, he can't keep on referring me back to someone that I also implicated, and, 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 and the proof is there. I provided them with the proof. And uh, since I wrote that to him, I never got a, any response from the office of the, of the president. All right. So, so what you're saying is that uh, Ramaphosa um, is, is basically cartailing to the corrupt ministers. So he's, he's part of the problem. Yes. He's definitely part, part of the problem because, uh, I mean, after the, 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 the release of the Zondo Commission, um, uh, uh, in, uh, especially in terms of the protection of whistleblowers, I believe the president is being the, 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 the president of the country, have the powers to, he could have made an immediate determination on the protection of, of all whistleblowers, but he just passed the ball to the Minister of Justice, who's going to sit with that ball for the next three years, and uh, whistleblowers will be hunted and killed until then, and they don't care. They don't care. Yeah. So, what would your message be to to South Africans, just and and people across the world regarding 
what you've discovered about this ANC government? You know what, um, especially to South Africans, I want to tell them that um, if they didn't see what happened for the past almost 30 years, the kind of regression that we see in our country, if they don't love themselves, let them at least love their children. Because we as parents are not going to be in this world for very long. But we are going to leave our children here. And you know what's called what keeps me awake at night and what keeps me going is that vision that I see of my children living in the next Zimbabwe where they have to beg at the robots for food, where they have to sleep under bridges. And that is what keeps me going because I, I, I will not rest in my grave if I know that I had the opportunity to make a cha change. I had the opportunity to secure a better future for my children. And I didn't do it because of fear, because I'm afraid to speak out, because of, of whatever reasons. There's simply, we simply don't have enough reasons anymore to not say no, I am not going to take this anymore. We don't have reasons anymore because the country, we, 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 we empowered corruption because we kept quiet about corruption. So all I want to say to, 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 to the world, if, 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 if you don't care about yourself, at least care about the children that you brought in this world and, and, and try to make a difference to the future that they are going to face when you're not around anymore. Right. Look, um, Patricia, I just want to say it's been um, quite an extraordinary live stream. I, I speak to a lot of people, and uh, I think I could count on one hand uh, the number of whistleblowers I've spoken to in the past few years. And I, I've got to say that um, I've never met someone who's basically been targeted by a corrupt system who is so brave and I, I just want to say that I've been watching the side chat and everybody is basically saying this woman is incredibly brave and we all stand by her so I, I just want you to know that the more your message gets out there the more support you're going to find and um, I hope that um, the the political parties outside, because the ANC is just a bunch of corruption, that's all it is. I mean, it's a, it's a mafia. Um, but those political parties outside the ANC, if, if they can perhaps put get their act together and start getting some of these ministers out, like Becca Sele, and getting someone in there who's got uh, integrity and, um, you know, will do a proper job, um, I think South Africa could steer itself out of the shit that it's in right now. And I'm talking quite, <laughs> I'm talking <laughs> how it is. <laughs> this is not metaphorical. This is a fact. You just go to Durban and see what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, Patricia, is there anything that I haven't covered that you'd like to, to talk about? Yes, uh, Scott, the last thing that I just wanted to say to, 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 to my president I don't know for how long is he going to be the president and to my government as a whole. You know what? I have an 11-year-old son, Scott, whose basic, right, basic rights has been, in terms of the Bill of Rights, in terms of the Children's Act, my child's basic rights are being infringed grossly on a daily basis. My child's basic right is be, to be taken care of. Now, here I am in hiding, and my child doesn't have a mother. I'm alive, I'm not dead. My child does not have a mother to take care of me because of, of, of a system that refused to assist me so that I can be part of my child's life. He had to, 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 to manage for almost the entire, let me say I've been in hiding since February this year. So he had to manage for the entire year without his mother. And, 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 and I mean, 
in terms of that in the children's act is that is a criminal offense the government is is, is is committing a crime against my child and in terms of the 16 days of activism against women and children there's a crime also against me as a woman in terms of the gbv the government is is, is committing committing a, a gross massive uh, agenda based violence against me uh, uh, me being hunted by by hitmen and they know about it so i just wanted to tell the government here yes i'm still going to open criminal cases against you for 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 what you putting me and my children through and and i'm going to use the the legislation that you put there to protect and, and now you are the, 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 the offenders in this matter. Yeah. Well, I, I've just looking at the side chat, it's just lit up and um, they're all saying, you know, we're all there behind you. Um, now, w what I would ask you to do, um, you, you're in contact with Marlena. Um, if at any time um, you would like to go public on something, just call Marlena and we'll have a live stream, okay? And we'll get your okay, message no, out there. Thank you so much. Because, okay. um, yeah, just, just know that Loving Life is 100% behind you. I've been saying for years now that what's happening in the South African Police Service is a disgrace. And under Becky Seller, it's just become a joke. It, it really has, and it's very sad. And, yeah, congratulations on standing up. And I, I know the personal risk you're taking. And, um, you know, as I said a moment ago, you're a very, very brave lady. And, um, um, yeah, just keep in touch with us and we will always be there for you as far as we can. I thank you so much, Scott. And thank you so much for giving me this platform. I'm very grateful. You're very, very welcome. Have a good evening and, um, yeah, God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much, Scott. You must also have a good evening. Yeah, thank you. Take care, Patricia. Mm -hmm. Bye. Okay. All right, guys, that, that's one heck of a brave lady, um, Patricia. And, um, wow. You, you know, you wonder why um, South Africa's in a mess, and you've just seen why. I mean, this, is, this, this cuts across every single government department. The corruption, um, the, 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 yeah, it, it's, it's a mafia that's running South Africa. That's what it is. It's the only way I can describe it. Regardless, um, I'll be speaking to you guys again on Monday and um, at 8 p.m. Johannesburg time. Um, please have a great and safe weekend. And if you're in South Africa, every time load shedding hits, just remember who's behind it. It's the ANC cadres. All right, guys, take care. And uh, here we'll wrap up with Op Ons Rots. Take care. And thanks to the mods for the great work that you've doing, been doing on the side chat. Ons loop aan tan hand, opgouwen warm stand. So baie wat ek wil hê, so baie dit brand. Ek staan op my rots, met golwe wat pots. Ons het geen vrees, want hy is in beheer. Ons het al die planne, Van godeloze mannen Ons weet hulle gaan in Vinnie Het is geskryf Soos een duif Ons al ween Aan ou god Want hy is een beheer Die winde waai sterk Dis krachte wat werk Die gevoel in my hart Dis vrees wat wil brand 
Als het boeren mij trots Met mijn hand in mijn borst Ons geen geen vrees Want hij is een beheer Ons die al die van goddeloze mannen Ons weet hulle gaan in vinnie Dus geschrijf Soos een duif Ons dan ver Hallo God Wat hy is in beheer Ons zien wat gebeur Die leer sal ons die steer Ons die 